Hello folks, in this video I'll be looking at how to get I2C devices working. If you're like me, you've connected your device up and you've got that message at the bottom, could not find a valid sensor, check wiring. And it can be very frustrating to get to the bottom of why your sensor isn't working. So the theme of this video is uh, is connecting I2C bus devices and getting them working is easy, right? Well, no, it's not. There are so many different variants of development boards, whether it be the ESP32 or ESP8266, the Arduino Mega, the Uno or Zero or whatever the device is. Finding out what that clock and data pin is is very difficult. To get your I2C device working, you've got to figure out, you've got to work out what are the I2C connections and the two, two connections required as VCC and ground are serial data, SDA, and serial clock, SCL. But it's a little bit more complicated than that, so you need to identify the correct pins to use and you need to find out what address your I2C device uses. So the first problem is to find out what is the correct pins to use and one solution, quite easy solution, is to write a short program that outputs to the serial port what the compiler thinks the serial data and serial clock pins are. And for most boards you'll usually get pins 4 and 5 respectively. And there I'm showing a diagram of the Wemos D1 Mini good diagram already shows you which pins but it's sometimes useful to confirm those in your uh, initial testing. So here's an example of using a Wemos D1 Mini connecting to the Adafruit BM, BME 280 uh, sensor temperature humidity pressure sensor connected up as per the diagram uh, download and install the Adafruit BME 280 library and uh, it works. You get readings from the device as expected. A little bit complicated because the I2C clock SCL is actually SCK on the Adafruit board and the I2C serial data pin needs to connect to the serial data input on that particular board. But there's good documentation on the Adafruit webpage and you can quickly and easily determine what the correct connections are. So that worked great. But not everyone buys the uh, Adafruit boards uh, and I myself have bought these um, what I call OEM or third party BME 280 boards and you connect them up as you'd expect to do so with the correct pins and they don't work but why not I've got the right device I've got the right wiring my test program the Adafruit test program for the BME 280 is correct but still it doesn't work so the first thing I do is check that the program is correct everything seems to be in order the wiring is correct the device I believe it's correct it's working I've no reason to believe it's been damaged so how can I now go and find out what's wrong with the sensor it's not working well the first thing to do is to assume that you have got the correct data and clock pins connected is to run the Arduino I2C device scanner and that will scan the I2C bus and find out all the I2C devices connected providing there isn't an address conflict so if there are two devices connected on address 77 it can't resolve that but it will tell you there is an I2C uh, device at that address so run the scanner and uh, find out in this in my example the I2C device was found at address hexadecimal 76 that seems okay but the sensor still isn't working why not the next thing to do having determined that there is a device connected um, at address hexadecimal 76 is to inspect in this case or in most library cases 
the .h file. So in this one, it's the Adafruit BME 280.h file to see what address I2C address has been defined. Uh, go down quickly, quickly found in most libraries, and sure enough, in this case, the BME 280 address is being assumed or set as hexadecimal 77. So there's one reason why it's probably not working. So let's correct that problem. We now found out that my device is, lives at address hexadecimal 76. Edit the file, save it and restart the IDE. It's very important that you do restart the IDE because these files are only loaded at uh, program startup. Connect the, connect the board, reconnect the board, uh, compile the program again, this time with the new address and hey it's working now great i'm now getting readings from the from the device as i expected so that was that problem solved in my next typical problem i want to use different pins from the pre-assigned d1 and d2 for clock and data for the wemos d1 mini i want to use pins um, three and four so I can include in my program a statement wire begin data clock and I'll choose wire begin D4 and D3 to reassign the pins but it doesn't work why not well having reassigned the pins the first thing we need to check is whether the library is reassigning them to something else so in this example the Adafruit BME 280 check the .cpp file and see if there are any wire begin statements and sure enough when you scroll down through the library if the device is if it's connected as a I2C device it has a wire begin statement with no parameters so it uses the default data and clock pins assigned to the compiler. So your wire begin D4, D3 statement has no effect. It gets ignored. So that's why it doesn't work. But the solution to this is reasonably straightforward. Edit the Adafruit BME 280.cpp file or any other library file for your sensor just keep reiterating this as an example and comment out that wire begin statement save the file and restart the IDE be very careful not to change the format of the file so typically use the notepad application on a Windows PC to make sure that doesn't happen now when I try out the uh, sensor everything's working as I expect I've got the wiring correct I've got the pin assignments correct with my wire begin D4 D3 statement I've removed the wire begin statement in the library and I've restarted the IDE and great I'm now getting readings from the sensor as I expected but remember if you ever go back to using an Adafruit sensor or um, any other type you from now on with that particular library you must always include a why begin data clock statement you have to now tell the library uh, how to instantiate the wire bus the i2c bus in summary then to get your i2c device to work use my my advice is to use the compiler to make sure you've got the correct data and clock pins that simple serial print data and serial print clock will confirm that for you most devices you buy don't tell you on the PCB what the I2C address is the good ones do the third party OEM ones don't tend to and it can be very difficult to find that out from data sheets so running an I2C device scanner and I'll put an example in github 
enables you to quickly determine what address the device uh, is assigning or has been assigned. Check your library that the address being assumed or set by the library matches your device. Earlier on I gave an example of the Adafruit BME 280, their device is at address 77, my device, my cheaper device, is at address um, 76, so that needs to be changed. If you're reassigning the, the pins for convenience usually, for wiring, um, check that there isn't an overriding wire begin statement in your device library, usually there is. So that needs to be commented out, but remember to put one into your program why begin pin 3 and 4 or D3 or D4 or whatever the pins are you're using. And that will ensure that your I2C device works effectively. I hope you found this uh, video useful and the software useful. Enjoy.